have many events um, to share about the community. And this one might be really interesting for you in terms of all kinds of different facets and different points of view of people who are sharing um, what they're going to be presenting at the this international forum of the premier place to learn about virtual exchange, the conference that's happening next week. And we have an opportunity for the SUNY COIL community to be um, monitoring different presentations throughout the whole event. So um, I'm really thrilled. It's um, three past 12. I'm really thrilled that the former assistant director of the SUNY COIL Center, Jan McCauley, is here with us today. What's your role now, Jan? She's everything that has Excellent. to do with organizing um, the International yes. Virtual Exchange Conference. Yes, I seem to be lacking a title these days. We haven't quite figured that out since I moved from UW to being employed by IVEC. So mm. I, I think that I am program manager is what I was most recently called, but I'm actually a consultant with IVEC. So I work with them kind of in, on, in many roles. But. Okay. So That's thank you right. for uh, for that kind introduction. It's nice to be back in the SUNY COIL fold. I've missed all the, the familiar faces. Oh. Yes, Good indeed. And I'm just going to send out a reminder. Um, but yeah, let's see. Um, so, and Sharmila, if you could add your institution after your name and also... Patricia, if you can add your institution. And um, Karen Collette, if you could add your institution, that would be great. Um, uh, is there a time? Um, we were thinking of having people share about the the their presentations in about um, 15, 20 minutes after Jan talks about what the overall International Virtual Exchange Conference will look like since it's fully online. And then we will also talk about this opportunity um, for people to um, participate at the conference at a reduced price. And then it's Laurette, hello. Nice to hello. see you. Thank you for coming in. And um, th then um, people will have a chance to share uh, for a few minutes about the presentation they'll be giving at IVAC. All right. Um, so take it away, Jan. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Um, I think I know most of your names and most of you are familiar to me. So um, as I said, I'm Jan McCauley. I am currently um, with the International Virtual Cons Exchange Consortium, and we put on the IVEC conference each year. Um, some of you were with us last year in Brazil. This year we are fully virtual. Um, it was a very uh, conscious and intentional decision to go virtual this year in order to um, in order to uh, really make it more inclusive in a variety of ways to be able to reach a lot of different um, different participants who often can't travel internationally to be in person at the conference. So um, so we made some intentional decisions about being virtual this year. It also allows us to um, you know, make a little bit more money to put towards the in-person conferences to make sure that we stay um, stay in an in a price point that is, you know, somewhat allows people to attend more easily. I know, you know, internationally that's always a difficult question, but we do try to keep um, keep the rates as low as possible for registration for the conference. So um, this was one way to, by doing, going virtual this year, it'll, you know, reduce costs considerably to not have venues and meals and all of those kinds of things. That said, we are trying our best to make it engaging and, uh, and interesting for everyone. I'm going to, um, I know many of you are already registered so you may have already seen the platform on Zoom events that we is kind of- Actually, in. Jan, can yes. I interrupt for a sec? So, so who want? on the call actually has registered? 
<laughs> not Gail. Okay, that's good to know. And um, and maybe Alexander hasn't. Patricia, did you have your hand up? I don't, I don't remember. Yes, you did. Patricia's, okay. And Patricia's Karen did. Okay. All right. So we do have a potential convert um, amongst us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Keep going. All right. So, um, so I'm going to share my screen to show you guys a little bit of what the platform is looking like. Keep in mind that we are um, making changes daily still to to the platform and updating things and making adding more information. Um, so many of you are, uh, I think at least a couple, Laura, I know that you are involved in one of the roundtable sessions. Those sessions were just added this morning. So if you were missing those in the uh, in the session listing earlier, they have, have arrived now I'll show you a little bit of that. So um, I'm going to go to this. So when um, if you have been on the on the coil or the sorry, wearing too many hats on the IVAC website, um, under programs there's a link to the landing page um, which looks like this. I'm already logged in, so it gives me the option to join the lobby. If you are not registered and logged in. Um, then it will show you the price point and allow you to buy a ticket if you're interested in that. So it's on, under the program tab on our website. Um, okay, hold on. So if you do decide, Gail, since you are, I'm going to ping you. If you do decide you want to help us and and be a chat monitor and network like crazy, um, you will get this 165 price point. Yes, you'll need to reach out to me to get an email invitation to get the the price at the early bird rate at this point. The website is only open for that. So I'll put the um, if, I'll put your email in the chat. Perfect. Thank you so much. So when you land again, this is again the landing page. So this kind of just shows you some of the featured sessions and the the general schedule of events. So you can see um we have a variety of types of sessions this year that are a little bit different than what we do normally in a an in-person conference. Some of them are the same, like synchronous workshops. Um, we have a variety of those being offered. We also have um, networking events that were submitted by the community. So those are kind of where the fun stuff happens, where people are you know, developing um, activities for networking and in a variety of ways. So there's a bunch of those. Um, then we have facilitated discussions, which is kind of akin to a standard sort of session presentation, but it's not what we wanted it to be more than just one person presenting slides, you know? So we have structured these very specifically as a conversation with the those who attend. So- um, Okay, hold on so, for a sec. Please, sure. So, you're throwing a lot of information at us. I'm trying to stay up, stay. Um, so when it's a facilitated discussion, would the monitor, if, if you sign up to be a chat monitor, would, would you be part of that? Or would there be someone else being the person that facilitates that? So the presenters will be facilitating the conversations, but we're, okay. So the presenters will be facilitating the discussion. They'll be present, you know, giving questions. There might be breakout activities and things of that nature. So as a chat monitor, if you are volunteering to assist in that way, you would kind of be following along, helping to kind of bring questions to the top of the chat, things like that. People can also um, help just, you know, by keeping time and kind of staying on top of things in that way is, you know, as another option. Jose Luis, please. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to do a workshop and um, I'm, I'm alone, but I would need a help with the breakout rooms. Would they uh, support on that sense? Yeah, I can I can assign somebody to be there um, to be in there to help with that piece. Since you're doing a workshop on your on your own, I'm going to make a note of it to make sure that we have someone assigned. We're assigning people to help with those things. So I'll make sure that that we get you. Somebody. Thank you. Of course. Thank you. Do you know when you're going to be presenting, Jose Luis? How about if we, as okay. an example, we can we can find it. How about that? All yeah, right. Yeah, so thank I'm going to go. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to switch to the lobby view. 
So if you click this button, join lobby, that would open up this view. So you can see that there's a lobby chat and there's some, some conversation already happening in here uh, that has already started a little bit, but this will be, um, this is visible throughout the conference the entire time. So if you're chatting in the lobby, that is visible to all attendees of the conference. And that's a little bit different from chatting within a session or within a flash session. And I will uh, I will show you both of those options as well. And if I'm if anyone has questions, please feel free to interrupt or raise your hand or whatever. It's a small group. We can jump around and answer questions as needed. So um, can I just ask, sorry to butt in. Um, um, welcome Veronica and Jason. Uh, I'm so glad you're here. And um, so basically will each kind of room um, look similarly or will they have a really different kind of look? Like the, the kinds of rooms you mentioned, the facilitated thing, the... Um, so for the most part, these are Zoom sessions, right? So uh -huh. if it's a facilitated discussion, you're going to be in a Zoom room. We have everything set up as meeting structures like this, not as webinar structure. So even the keynote address where all or and the plenary sessions, they will all be set up as meetings so that you can turn on your camera, you can, you know, engage in the conversation, you can chat, things like that. So they will be obviously, you know, Zoom rooms like these where the sessions will occur. Um, and then how it works with breakout rooms and activities is up to the individual presenters. The exception to that are the asynchronous flash sessions, which I will show you. Okay, great. Thanks. So, yeah. So in general, these are kind of, and then the lobby chat can be closed over there. So, um, in general, this is what a session when you when you come to the to a session, you'll join. There'll be a join link that you can use. Okay. Um, what you know now? It's, I'm logged in as a host, so it's asking me to start session, but so it'll look a slightly different. But so this is the general session schedule. Um, so as I said, in the lobby, you can see featured sessions, and you can see speakers. And you can go to see all of the speakers by clicking here, or you can use these tabs up here. So if we go to the sessions tab, this will give us kind of the breakdown of all of the different sessions. So you can see that at the first thing on the first morning, there's only one concurrent session, but it's the plenary out into the keynote address. We're really excited to have Keisha Abraham joining. Um, she's going to be giving a really nice talk about, oh, I need to need to do some formatting work on that one, I guess. Um, but so she's going to be um, discussing uh, equity and uh, resources and things like that um, really and how they relate to virtual exchange. So um, I welcome, I would invite you to check out if you go to her, um, to her biography, I did put a link to her company, the Abraham Consulting Agency. Um, she's she does some very interesting work, and I think this is going to be a great keynote. So we're really excited about that. Yeah, really looking forward to that. So so you can see on Monday you have the the keynote address, and then concurrent sessions will begin. So in the ten thirty block, we have four concurrent sessions happening, including the first of the round of eight roundtable discussions. So roundtable discussions. If I can jump in on that real quickly, these were not included, you didn't have the option if you submitted a proposal at the beginning of the conference, one of the choices was asynchronous flash sessions. Round tables were created by the board of directors of IVEC, by the IVEC planning committee. Um, so once we had all of the asynchronous flash sessions submitted and selected, the planning committee went through and pulled out various flash sessions that could be grouped into themes. So real mm -hmm. quickly, I'll show you, once you're on this screen, you can also filter by the dates. Can you zoom in track. on that? We can hardly see. Oh, really? I don't know, can I? Or maybe I should zoom in at, at my own. Oh, that's great. That's, that's really also helpful. The, 
Can I ask a question about the times are in um, Eastern Standard, right? Because it's your your because it's on my screen right yeah, now. It's it. Eastern Standard. When you are logged in, it will automatically adjust to your time zone. So that's a really good question. Thank you, Gail, because that's very um, helpful. These time zones have been. I can't tell you how much time I'm spending on World Clock's website. <laughs> um, so and then Patricia asks, can we filter by author as opposed to filter by time? Unfortunately, not on this filter. I, you know what? I'm that's a good question. Um, I but what you can you can always do is control F and search for a name. So I think oh, maybe not. If it's only in the title, I think. I'm sorry, we're still a little bit. My my educational technologist was not available to join the meeting, so <laughs> I'm a little bit, uh, you'll have to forgive me if I'm not. Um, and then also Dan had a question. I'm logged in, but I'm not able to visit the lobby. Is that because it's not open yet? No, it should be open, Dan. You should be, um, are you logged in with the email address at which you received your speaker invitation? Yes, I think I am. Okay, let me, uh, okay. let me make a note. Yeah, let me make a note of that and see what the issue is. Dan, does your university require a single sign-on for Zoom? Hmm. Because that- I don't know uh, what that means. Okay, if you were to log in on Zoom on a random new computer, would you just type in your email address or do you select SSO? I can, I can do either, but I mostly select SSO. They recommend that I do that. Okay. That so that's that the might issue. Have been it. That would be the issue. Then you can't. We don't have single sign-on um, option for the event. So when you log in, you need to log in, select, log in with your email, and enter your username and password directly, um, and then oh. that will bring you to the event. Thank you, Jason. That does, that, does that also apply for the website? Even when I'm just looking at the. Uh, um, you know, the events to dot, get into the lobby. US. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For Zoom events, we don't have the option for single sign on. So, to, to, on, so I need to go to my Zoom account and log out and then log back in now. Maybe I'll try it. Yeah. You might have to if it's because it might be automatically logging you into the site through this. Yeah. I'll give it a try. I may have to leave this call, but I'll come back. Okay. Good. Great. You Thank can you, try it out. And Sharmila, a uh, follow-up on that is, uh, is there instructions going to be sent to us about this issue? Sending an email in? today to all attendees with instructions. Awesome. So I'm just honing it um, this morning. So I apologize for the delay. Everyone should have it later today. I just wanted to make sure I had all of the information. Correct. This is good because you're getting a little more stuff from all of us. Feedback. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So speakers have gotten a couple of emails and now today the all attendee email will go out to everyone. So yeah. And so Sharmila you thanks you. Oh, you're so welcome. All right. So when you're filtering sessions, um, I'm going to select the round tables so that you can see what those kind of look like. Um, there are eight round table events. So as I was saying, we at the, the planning committee went ahead and selected themes pulled themes that were that were visible through the asynchronous flash sessions and created roundtable events around those themes to include three three to four flash sessions, uh, asynchronous flash sessions per roundtable. Patricia, did you have a question? Up, oh, you're muted. Here's here. There you go. Ask to unmute. Thanks. There you go. I'm uh -huh. trying to get into the 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 platform. I I'm having an issue because I used to have Zoom with SUNY Rockland, 
but it's over the the school doesn't pay for it anymore so my zoom is my personal account and now i think i got into it yesterday and i have another question because i, I couldn't figure out how to upload the flash session that's another thing but now i'm trying to get back in and i'm getting the same email from zoom it's saying since i have a sunyrockland.edu address that i'm trying to create that free account it's telling me i have to ask my school administrator or something which it's probably going to cause problems since they took them away. So that's where I'm at. Okay. Can for you, can you send me an email, Pat? And we'll like, I can change, I can update your email to your personal in the system okay. so that you can avoid that issue. Thank you. Cause that I'll never get an answer from them. Thank you. And I don't know if you sent me an email already. I have not had time to go through my emails today. Probably. So. But if I get in with AOL, then I'll be fine. And then I just have to figure out how to upload it. I was having a hard time. But if you can give a tip right now, that would be perfect. Thank you. Yes. Anything else? Dan, Dan's back. I'm oh. back. Did it work? I'm still trying. I'm still figuring okay. that out. All right. Thank so, you. So, yeah, sure. Um, okay. So the round tables. As I was saying, we have a whole bunch of flash sessions, which are kind of like poster presentations, kind of asynchronous flash session kind of setups. So we asked flash presentation presenters to create a set of 10 slides to kind of capture in a brief format the the in the you know the information for their session. Then we pulled these themes together. So the way the roundtable sessions will work is that we have a moderator who will be running the session. The asynchronous flash presenters will be there and they will do a very brief introduction. One of their, one of their speakers will do a very brief introduction of their content. So we recommend that you go to the, the asynchronous sessions and review the information first so that you have the full content. Are you speaking in, as a, are you talking as an attendee? As an attendee. Okay. So you'll see. So join presenters from the following flash sessions in a moderated roundtable discussion on the topic of equity and social justice, for example. Visit the flash hall to view this, these presentations first. Doesn't look right. I don't think there's any that have five. I have one of these in here twice. I apologize. I'll fix them. <laughs> so that's my problem. Um, I added this one twice. So um, when you go to any of these roundtable sessions, it will show you which flash sessions are associated. Um, by the way. So we have eight of these on a variety of topics. So we have equity and social justice, AI, VR, and more, considerations for VE design, exploring VE models, developing intercultural competence, and workforce readiness, scaling virtual exchange and preparing global citizens. So those are the eight themes that we saw kind of coming up from the asynchronous flash sessions that were submitted and we created these round tables. So as I said, each flash session presenter will do a quick introduction of their content. And then the moderator has created a set of questions that they're going to put out there for discussion with between the presenters and the attendees of each session. So this is a really um, good, it, it'll be a really good conversational way for, um, for people to engage with the asynchronous flash materials. And I wanna talk a little bit more about that. So you see two things up here at the top of the, of the screen. We have flash sessions and flash hall. And I don't know if this is Right now, it might be causing a bit of confusion because the flash hall is not open to everybody yet. As presenters, you might be able to see the flash hall. In the flash sessions, they're, they're all here. I know this is not ideal layout. Um, some people are doing really nice things with changing their, uh, their images so that it kind of captures a summary of the theme of their topic or has their logo. Um, we expect to see more of that. Um, these are a little bit difficult to search right now. In the all attendee instructions that I'm sending out today, you will all be receiving a PDF document 
that's kind of like a book of abstracts for the asynchronous sessions. And they're all going to be coded. And these titles will include the codes once I get in there today and, and I'm able to update everything. So this, it, it might be tomorrow. Let's be honest. <laughs> There's a lot going on. So um, we are, so I know that this is not an ideal searchable kind of layout right now for the asynchronous flash sessions. We are working on that and we are coming up with ways to make this a little bit more accessible to everybody. So don't, um, don't worry too much about that yet. We are, we are working on it. So when you are looking at these, um, these flash sessions, when you go in, you can see that some people have created short videos. There are slide session presentations. There are also downloadable materials. And this is Pat, where you're going to add your stuff under assets. There's a, once you're in there, you'll see, but we can walk through it. I can send you an email with additional instructions. They will go in under downloadable materials. So this is really great. Creating a little short video to kind of summarize your, your information and encourage people to download is a really good way to kind of create an engaging space for this. What's going to be really good is so right now if you're registered and you're logged in you can see all of these flash sessions under the flash session tab you can go in and explore there's lots of material there lots of content during the days of the conference you'll engage with these materials in the flash hall the flash hall is set up like an expo hall like if any of you have ever been to nafsa or into any of those kinds of conferences where they have expo halls and lots of booths that's the way that this is set up. So when the conference days are on, and not just during the four hours of conference content, the whole day from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. UTC, so whatever that is time zone wise for you, um, the, the flash hall will be open. And if you enter a flash hall booth, You'll be able to see space where you can chat with the with the authors. You can do a, a text chat with them in the booth. You can access their materials. You can see their uh, their bios. You can also, if they are in the space, you can start a convert. They can start a conversation. So we have asked asynchronous presenters that if they intend to, you know, when there's not a session and that they're going to be at when there's a break, things like that. If you're going to be in your booth, um, you can, people can put a time, put a schedule, put out a message in the lobby chat and say, I'm in my booth. This is the title of it. If anyone wants to chat and people will be able to join conversations there. So it will function very much like an expo hall at an in-person conference where you can kind of pop in and out and visit people. Jan, is there a video option, like a synchronous video option for that, or is it just text? There is. You can start a live discussion. So there's okay. text. Text will be on all the time. Live discussion is if someone's, if the presenter is present, you can ask, you can start a, a live discussion there. So we're hoping that that will be a good way for everyone to kind of engage with that asynchronous material. Okay, so it's twelve thirty. Um, oh, yeah, I went on a bit. Sorry. That's okay. I mean, there's a lot here. Um, there are some technical questions which I'm pushing off till the last ten minutes. Okay. Um, but if anybody has a question that's not technical, like Lorette just asked, if we can view content at twenty four seven or only during the scheduled session. In the asynchronous, in the flash sessions, Lorette, you can see them now all the way through the conference and we'll leave them open after by using the flash session tab. The flash hall, the booths will only be open during conference time. But like okay. I said, during the full day of the conference days. Okay. All right. Um... Okay, so any other questions for Jan about getting around? Um, have yeah. volunteers already been contacted about their scheduling? 
Not yes, not okay. yet. No, um, we were hoping to kind of get some more people. So if uh, I don't know if you submitted times that you're available, Jason, I think that when we talked, you hadn't said any times. Um, we have a bunch of time slots that are available. I pretty much any time that there is a networking session or a facilitated discussion is pretty wide open. So I don't know, hope if you've had very many people sign up for specific time slots yet, we kind of need to check in on that. But if there are days and times that you specifically are available, or if there are sessions that you particularly want to see, and you're planning to attend anyway, please shoot me a message with those with those sessions and we'll make okay. sure that you get signed up. Okay. And then by I, the end of this week, I will have, a, I'll have messages out to everybody. Perfect. I saw the form hyperlink that um, Hope sent. So I, would it be better if I just complete the form? That would be great, actually. Okay, yes, yeah, that would be perfect. Excellent. So yeah. this is the form. Jan, do you want to just mention anything about it? Basically. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Well, it should be pretty self-explanatory that you get to go at the reduced cost and you're going to make sure that people are involved. And if there isn't a facilitator, then that is what you'll do. You'll do what it says here. Keep the conversation going. Um, have people introduce themselves. If the thing hasn't started and you have time and people don't already aren't doing this, then you might want to do an icebreaker in the chat. And so it's everything is not verbal. It's just in text. Okay. And yeah, you just want to really think of it. You're the host of the party. Okay. And um, really important to note what time zone you're in and um, which day the time this is so you got to translate this for you okay what time this is you're willing to chat be the chat person okay we were i think that all of you guys have been in enough meetings with hope to know how she gets people active in the chat so when we when we were thinking about how we could get people engaged in these sessions we said we need basically a hope in every room and so that's that's kind of <laughs> that's that's why we reached out to her and said we need your help with this engagement piece because we want a whole crew of hopes. Mm -hmm. and, and we know I'll, that no one no one can duplicate that energy that she brings to it. No, yeah, but I, I we absolutely all try think, our best. Yeah, I absolutely think this crew that's vis right here right now can absolutely do that. So, absolutely okay. Um. All right, so let's go around the room um, just to hear a little bit of people's presentations. I know that I had asked um, many of you who are here to share what you're going to be doing. And um, so um, please, if you do have more questions for Jan, throw them in the chat. And I'm just going to um, just, we can do sort of a, popcorn style and you'll just have two minutes and um so i'm gonna start with i know patricia probably needs to go because are you somewhere in illinois uh where are you patricia i want to let you go first and you have two minutes to share about your presentation at ibec okay can you hear me Patricia, you want to unmute? Hi, Thanks. it's me because there are two Patricias here. Oh, so sorry. It's me? Yes, it's you. <laughs> yes. Hello. There Hello, you go. good afternoon. <laughs> I just asked Jen if uh, we are going to enter the round table session, click and enter a Zoom room, right? Is yeah. it going to be this way? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, so that's exactly right. So Patricio, you have two minutes wow. to share about your what you're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, AI 
uh, for uh, perception surveys we made with our students at FATEC Ipiranga, São Paulo, and Universidade de Aveiro, Portugal. We conduct these perception surveys at Centro Paulo Souza, FATEC, since 2020. And we, we have just this uh, Microsoft Forms surveys, and we have lots of information and couldn't uh, analyze with uh, clarity the data. So our Big Data Student program at FATEC Piranga um, shows a variety of, of AI uh, tools like Pandas, Google AI, and other to make um, tag clouds and uh, boards, dashboards and reports summarizing this information. What were the positive aspects? What should we uh, improve? And also they had made an exploratory, exploratory survey um, seeking the inter interrelation between time management, leadership, intercultural awareness, uh, and the learning process. And they discovered that 50% of learning comes from uh, intercultural awareness and, and time management and teamwork. And it was enlightening for us. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. That sounds amazing. And you did your right within your time. Good job. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Go, Patricia. Um, all right. So, Jose Luis, would you like to share? Yes. Uh, I'm going to have two presentations. Um, maybe hope you can talk about the the coil rubric no, and no. I concentrate on the other one. Uh, yeah, but the, the one that I'm going to be alone is, is a work, and it's about uh, coordinators code of honor and how um, the pressure for uh, having more and more and more uh, coils in our institutions, sometimes it forces us to go over the other institution and sometimes we cross a red line. So this workshop, it will be in finding uh, agreements. Uh, everybody's gonna be working together to create these rules of, of, of honor on how to work together and respect the other institution and uh, um, uh, having uh, conflict res resolution. That's basically what this workshop is gonna be about. And the other one, very briefly, is uh, the, the, coil, uh, the SUNY COIL rubric. Uh, is uh, it's a set of standards, it's a web page that we have designed and we're gonna be talking about that, a set of uh, high quality standards of designing and implementing COIL. I don't know, Hope, if you wanna say something about that. Oh, that was perfect. The, the, the reason that we're offering this and that we've put it together is especially for people who come from an online learning background um, to understand some of the potential ways that you could assess a COIL project like you assess an online course. So um, we're trying to bridge the gap between the two communities. So thank you, Jose Luis, that's amazing. And um, Veronica, would you like to go next? Sure, thank you, Hope. Uh, I will also be participating in two sessions. Um, the first one is um, a facilitated discussion. Um, I will be participating actually with Daniel. Probably you can add more than. <laughs> and um, with John Drubin and Sarah Pitarello, mm -hmm. we, will talk, we will talk about the evolving role of organizations that support COIL and virtual exchange. And in general, we will talk about our organizations, well, COIL Connect, LATAM COIL, UNI Collaboration, and what uh, University of Minnesota is doing regarding COIL. 
we um, have four working groups that um, we will have the audience to discuss. These are some well, working groups that we have identified that should uh, be part of our organizations to continue helping grow the growth of COIL around the world. And we will ask for suggestions probably for some new groups that uh, the institutions and professionals have identified that we need to like form so that we need to focus on probably on other topics that we haven't thought about. And I don't know, Daniel, do you want to add more to what I'm saying? Because Dan is going to be there too. Thank okay, you, so you got much. one minute. Okay, very quickly, I just say that I think everybody in this room recognizes that we build better when we build together. And that's the goal of this session is to bring out the conversation around the needs and to have people come up with ideas of how we can support this field together, whether it be a code of honor for co coordinators or whatever your idea is. It's really looking for those uh, areas of need. And then how can we work together to, to support this field? Great. Wonderful. Okay. I hope, Angie, can you say something else? Sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I will be participating also in round table eight. The topic is, is virtual exchange contributing to build up a global citizenship awareness? So it's also, if you want to go to round table eight, that's the topic we are going to discuss on global citizenship, basically, and how COIL is uh, helping to develop these global citizenship skills that we need in students. That's wow, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you. Sharmila. Can you all hear me? Yes. All right, so from UNC Chapel Hill, we have a total of three presentations. Me and my colleague, Emmy, are presenting in the round table. Um, the title of the round table is Scaling Virtual Exchange. And that is on Thursday, October 24th at 8 a.m. And we also have a flash session that is called Strategies for Sustainable Growth, Institutionalizing VE at UNC Chapel Hill. So the purpose of these two is basically because, you know, COIL sometimes begins at campuses, but then it kind of loses team. So what are different strategies that we can use to kind of continue the process to also not only sustain it, but also scale it? and identify partners that can be, you know, um, uh, stakeholders and partners in the process. We also have our instructional designer uh, fellow, uh, Manisha Mittal, who is going to be presenting with John Fowler and others from Panorama uh, on supporting success, networking session for, for instructional designers and pedagogical specialists. And this session is on Tuesday, October 22nd from 8 to 9 a.m. Eastern. And she is absolutely wonderful. So I urge all of you all to attend. She has a lot of great ideas on the design components for COIL and virtual exchange. So yeah, that's all we're doing. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yes, looking forward. <laughs> Patricia from SUNY Rockland. Thank you, Sharmila. Hi, everyone. So we are doing a flash session and the title is called, and me is uh, myself and Catherine Rose. She is not on the call though. And our title is plant the seed of cultural humility in student activities such as virtual exchange. Uh, well, that might, that's our introduction. But what we uh, address is a case study that I actually did with South Africa with Durban University of Technology. And so we, we talk about cultural humility and how it's embedded or indigenous to virtual exchange. And then we go into the global competencies that we actually assess. They're laid out in the, in the slides. So we did a qualitative and quantitative survey. I couldn't get all of the qualitative comments in just in the amount of slides. So, but, uh, Anybody who comes to the flash session, you will see the actual survey. I got it in there and then I post the results and then the final survey and then I post the results on that. So it was the first time that I actually did an assessment on the benefits of global competencies, skills and cultural humility in virtual exchange. And the results are overwhelmingly positive that the students found that one on the pre-assessment that they found all of the the competencies to be very important. And then at the end, the results show that they felt that they increased the skills. So, you know, to sum up what 
I always try to stress doing a virtual exchange is, you know, when we're talking about cultural humility, that we're you're not going to be an expert in this one experience, but the more virtual exchange experiences that you do have or interactions with people from other backgrounds and um, cultures that you will continue to learn. So we talk about that personal self-reflection, self-assessment first, and then lifelong commitment to intercultural learning. That's it. Okay. Perfect timing. Um, Lorette, you're up. And then um, if someone has a question directly at Jan, please go ahead. And then uh, after Lorette, I don't, I think that's everybody. Um, we're going to go, oh, Ale um, Elena is here too. And she can speak after Lorette. And then after Elena, if people want to talk about um, tech issues, uh, that would be great. So take it away, Lorette. Thank you very much, Patricia. And um, yeah, go for it. Okay. Um, thanks, Hope. Um, I'm getting really excited about this conference, listening mm -hmm. to all these uh, introductions to the presentations. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to attend as much as I'd, I'd hope to. I'm going to be traveling that week and I still don't have my schedule, so I'm not sure exactly what, what sessions I'm going to be able to attend, but everything so far sounds really interesting. Um, I am not sure if I'm going to be the one presenting uh, at uh, our our round table, uh, but I'll be represented, our work will be represented by my colleague Sandy Wynn and Chris Wan, also from SUNY Empire and um, Melissa Rosario from UNAPEC in the Dominican Republic. They will all be there. Um, in our session, we've been working primarily with three different models of virtual exchange at uh, SUNY Empire and UNAPEC depending upon sort of the goals and the time that is available for the different um, activities. Uh, one is the tradition, more traditional COIL model, which we consider to be sort of the gold standard, but we also um, use a model that we call shared discussions, which is uh, for a shorter time frame, And um, we are leaning more into a model that we call virtual residencies, which combines multiple instructors and courses into a single activity. Um, so we'll be talking about the pros and cons of, of the three different models and a little bit about the differences and the results that we're seeing related to global competencies. Hmm. Wow. Oh my goodness. You're right, Lorette. It is getting really exciting to hear about everybody's and th and that's just something to note because this really is our community. This ex this conference is really, as Dan reminded us, that it's really a chance for us to share and to learn from each other and to remember that um, we are stronger together. So, um, thank you, Lorette, so much. Um, Elena, go for it, and then Karen, absolutely. Um, please share, and then we'll have time for tech issues. Elena, you're muted. Here, let's see. I'm going to ask you to unmute. There you go. There you go. All set. Um, we still can't hear you. You know what? I'm going to come back to you. Let's go, Karen. And then we'll come back to, to Elena. Sorry. Thank you, Hope. And thank you um, um, for all the colleagues that have given us a chance just to speak. Just to say um, it's lovely being connected and knowing we'll be presenting at IVEC. It's um, very exciting. I'm sorry I'm not able to moderate or hold a session, but hopefully in future years I will. Um, just to say that I'll be doing two presentations. The one presentation... Um, focuses on institutional level factors. Um, so I'm very interested in connecting with Dan and with Luna, um, Dr. Luna, um, on their presentation, that um, both support and constrain the ability to engage with in-coil programs. Um, so we're using a cultural historical activity theory lens to actually look at that. And um, the next presentation um, with will be, so both presentations I'm doing with my, um, partner um, at the University of Missouri, St. Louis, um, Prof. Alina Slipak. And the, the second presentation will be on 
looking at um, through the lens of um, science learning principles um, and teacher actions, looking then critically at our COIL um, co course as well as our student engagement. So we'll use that as a frame, another frame to try and assess the the influence and the um, um, of our COIL courses and assessment activities on the developing of student global competence and intercultural competence. So um, yeah, we're on the program. Um, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Herb. Woo. Wow. So much good stuff. Okay. Um, Elena, did you get it to, oh, you didn't. Okay. So Elena's going to share in the chat. Um, and, oh, that's a good idea, Dan. Um, can people put times for their talks um, in the chat. That would be great, just so we know. And I'm going to share this recording. Um, if everybody's okay with that, I'm just going to go to the gallery view and give me a thumbs up. Would it be okay if I share this um, with the SUNY COIL community and also in LinkedIn? Would that be okay to share this video? Would that be all right? I've got a thumbs up from some of you. Um, okay, from Karen. Good. And all right. Um, okay, great. Thanks, Sharmila, for showing the way. And thanks, Brianne, for being excited. Um, tech support issues. Any other questions for Jan? Because you have her here. We've this covered is... a bunch in the chat. But yeah, Dan, if you're willing to maybe switch to a different account information why don't you email me or I'll, I'll reach out to you and we can see what we can figure out and the same for you pat if you want to send me your like a gmail or something or your aol account then we can we can get that figured out i apologize i think that it's catching people in their institutional accounts i've had that issue with zoom at some points in the past so might have that okay all right any other thoughts, questions? So Jan, one more time about the chat people, um, the people so, willing yes. to do that. So um, if you are willing yeah. to help and you want to fill out that form um, to let us know what times you're available, then by the end of the week, I will um, I will get back to everybody to confirm your session times for moderation and assistance. If you have not already registered, um, and you are interested in registering at the early bird price of 165, shoot me an email and I will send you the invitation to get that price. Looking at you, Gail. <laughs> <laughs> and also Brienne, I think it's gonna oh, do good. that yes, too. Okay. I will do my best to be a Hope Wendell. <laughs> Just to be, I gotta, I gotta up my, I gotta up my, uh, my wardrobe game <laughs> just be all. your fabulous self um absolutely oh, okay. that would be awesome so yeah we look forward to uh we're really excited we're ready to get moving so well i'm i'm not ready at all i saw um, with a hundred things long so <laughs> so let's just if there we have three people who we haven't heard from at all alexandra siran and dauda Dioda, do you, any of you want to say anything in the chat or unmute or um, jump in? We would love to hear from you if you have any questions. Um, we know you're here. Um, if not, uh, oh, hello, look at you. So where are you coming in from? I'm from Kodiwa. Wonderful. In, in West Africa. Excellent. Wonderful. Do you have a question? Are you going to be able to join us? I'm registered for the for the for the conference. Excellent. So you're registered, and yes. um and. Please, if you would I, like I, to... I've even received a partial scholarship. <gasps> Woohoo! Everybody give a round of applause. There's nothing like a scholarship. Yay. Yes. 
Wonderful. So we look forward to, will you be presenting or um, we will meet you in the conference? I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to present, but I will be a participant. Okay. And what university are you with? Uh, I, I am a, I used to be a member of APHA, the American Public Health Organ Association. Got it. Yes. Okay, great. Do you know, do you know the, do you know the APHA? I personally don't. Maybe there's somebody on the call that does. Yes. Anyone? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Maybe put in the chat. That would be really great. Yeah. Well, wonderful to have you here and looking forward yeah, to, yeah, thank you. to being together next week. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, de definitely. I will. Okay, good. Yay. Yeah. All right. And Sirone or Alexandra, do you want to say hi? Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Um, anything else? Oh, the American Public Health Association. Wonderful. Wow. It's so great to connect. Um, any other questions for Jan? Who what what happens if we do need to troubleshoot Jan? Is there like a hotline? How do we oh look, here's Suron. Okay. Hi, how are Hi. you? Today? Hi, where are you coming in from? Um, we're coming in from Maryland. Oh, uh, University of Maryland? No, we're coming in from Morgan State. I'm so sorry. Oh, Morgan State. <laughs> yeah, we're coming in for him, yes. We're oh, just great. In for him today, and, and I'm stepping in for Siran. So. Oh, okay. Yes. So um, an HBCU, a historically <laughs> Black college and university, yes. is in the house. In the house. Yay. Yes. Good. I'm yes. so glad you're here. Um, yes, thank you so much. Wonderful. And if you have questions, um, please share. Mm -hmm. Um, I had everything down written. I have okay. no questions. I just wanted to pop in and just let you know that we were here. Okay. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Well, so going back to Jan, is there a, a hotline or a help desk or who do we reach out when we're like, we can't get in? Okay. So there will be um there will be the lobby chat, which we'll be monitoring for sure. So if there are issues, um, if you're in and you have issues, then you can contact us that way. Um otherwise, I I'll be watching the IVAC email that day. Uh trying to think what else we can do. So is that different we... from Jan McCauley at IVAC? Well, it's the what info it? at iveconference.org, but both, I mean, I'll be there. So I'll be available. I'm basically the hotline. I and mean, we have tech support. They're going to be in a ready room on the platform. So if you are having trouble getting into the platform, I will probably be, I would probably be your safest first line of. Okay. Death. So not info at ivec dot, is it so dot com you can, you, or is that org? Not, dot org. So org. you would okay. want to reach me, iveconference.org. Okay. Or info at iveconference.org. Okay. Either one of those works. And also, I mean, I, I mean, I put my I put my WhatsApp number in all of um in my okay. Don't put it in this. Anyway, this so if link. people. Okay. I don't, I don't worry about that. So okay. if people All need right. me on WhatsApp, that's where I am. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks everybody for participating and we'll see you next week. Woohoo. Have a wonderful Thanks, rest everybody. of your day and Thank evening you. and um, you know who to call and um, hopefully we'll see you in the chat. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.